Business Brain, episode 473 for Wednesday, August 9th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take a topic or maybe two topics each episode and we analyze them and use them to train our business brains together so that we can all keep living those charmed lives that we value so much. Sponsors for this episode include Zinch, which you can learn about at financingthatworks.com. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And uh, still out here in California, I'm Shannon Jean. How was your uh, week going, sir? My week goes. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. It's, uh, rock as long and as you roll. keep moving forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, you know, sometimes you you get derailed and and have to be productive with things you didn't plan to be productive with, but it's all <laughs> still like being every day. productive. <laughs> That's right. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, speaking of being productive, we talked uh, I don't know a year and a half ago with Jeremy Butcher at Apple. Uh, about their at the time new that's right product called apple business essentials i found out today that apple business essentials is now available directly through cdw so certainly you can still buy it from apple directly of course but if you're okay. buying a bunch of stuff through cdw you can buy apple business essentials there uh and it you know it it's it allows you to really easily manage you, the iPhones, iPads, and Macs of all of your employees in a really sort of organic way, uh, and and you get two free months doing it through CDW as well. So, yeah, that's pretty so, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. So I'll put a link in the okay. show notes to not only the the thing where you can find it at CDW, but also our interview with uh, Jeremy Butcher talking about it, so you can learn more about it there too. So yeah, fun stuff. Nice. Good tidbit. Yeah, it is. It, yeah, I was happy to see that. It's it's nice to have it available like right at the point of purchase for folks that are just doing it right there. So, yeah. Um, we got an email from listener Robert uh, who runs a, a tech company where he helps folks with uh, their smart home stuff. And he said on episode 472, you mentioned a tip on using QR codes to provide value uh, for joining Wi-Fi networks or finding an Instagram page, etc. It reminded me that one of the marketing tools, one of the marketing tools I use, easy for me to say, to shorten URLs can also make QR codes for them. And maybe I should give that a try. But first, I want to get your feedback on something. I've been experimenting with uh, doing this, and I'm not sure whether it's good or possibly a controversial practice. I use this URL shortener tool. It's called Tiny CC, and it's very affordable compared to the bigger ones. To track the effectiveness of marketing tools such as ads or email newsletters by assigning unique URLs to the call to action that I put in these things so I can track the source of the interactions. With the traditional open tracking in email no longer effective, um, email open tracking is blocked by many email software systems for privacy reasons now. Uh, so you can't easily see, or at least you can't accurately see, who has viewed your emails. But tracking URLs allow you to see who is acting on the message by visiting a web page or taking another action. I've ex been experimenting. He continues uh, saying he's been experimenting by putting unique shortened URLs into messages I send to prospective clients and customers where the interact in interaction starts with an email or text. This allows me to see if they read any supporting materials, a PDF, website pages, or even visit an online calendar booking page to schedule a follow up. So that's interesting. So not just a generic URL that does the redirect and you can see how many people used it, but using one very specifically, like I've pitched client A on doing right. this job, create a, a, a client A specific URL for whatever, your calendar page, whatever it might be. Uh, and that way, you know, if they've taken an action on that, uh, his question is, do you think this is a legit marketing tool? Or is this crossing the line into gray hat or even black hat techniques? Oh, I think every, I, I would say almost every email you prop, get from a company or, you know, entity that may want you to do business with is already being tracked in one way or another. So I think it's definitely acceptable. Yeah. I, and, and I'm, I am as a, as a consumer, I'm glad that 
the email software I use by default, which is Apple's Mail, yep. obscures people's ability to tell whether I've simply opened an email or not. Yeah, right? the like, pixel thing. Yeah, the, the pixel track. Great. It's great. You want yeah. to describe what that is? Yeah. So the uh, idea, and we don't do it on the podcast either, although probably most of the other shows you listen to do. The idea behind what's called pixel tracking uh, is by putting a pixel, and and it started with a uh, hidden image pixel. So it, it, and that's why they call it pixel tracking. If, if you put a one by one image somewhere, we used to do it on the web. Some people still do it on the web. Uh, if you can do it in an email, you can sort of do it in the RSS feed of a podcast. And the idea behind pixeling is it's not a visible pixel. It's usually the same color as the background and it is just one pixel, but by loading that image, and especially if that image uh, the URL for that image is customized to you as the recipient of that email. They know whether or not you open that email because your email client loads that image when the email is opened and not before. What certain vendors like Apple have done is they make it so that when you receive an email, whether or not you open it, all the images are loaded. So all those pixels will fire and it makes people's open rates look wonderful. So if you think your open rates have been fantastic recently in the past couple of years, maybe that's why. Although most email yeah. uh, most email service providers are aware of this and sort of filtered out. But uh but that so it's a it's an interesting it was a you know it's all just a cat and mouse game, right? And it yeah, was a that's right. a smart hack uh w whether it was uh more ethically sound or not it's certainly from a technological perspective it was a smart way of saying oh hey i, I can figure out if somebody opened this email and right. so you can't you can't do that anymore because the email clients block it but you can put links in the email where when someone clicks it you know if they have clicked that and it that those links are specific to the person to whom the email was sent so all you're doing robert is manually creating these uh click tracking links that would automatically be uh, tracked if you were using an email uh, service provider yeah, like, like a MailChimp, MailChimp or, convert yeah, kit convert, yeah right. whatever yeah yep. so you're not doing anything different and I think that if I click on a link I presume that someone knows I took that action whether they do or not it you know is up to them that's me taking an action. It's not just me passively reading an email. It's not just sure. me visiting a website. If I am clicking on a link, I know that that's a trackable event. Now, does every single human know that? No. But anyone who's concerned about their privacy either does know that or very shortly will know that, right? So I think what you're doing, Robert, is really smart. It tells you, did someone take an action? You don't know whether or not they read the email. You can't know that anymore. But you can know if they took an action. And certainly you could do this other ways too. So, you know, I don't think you're doing anything wrong. I think you're being really smart about it because you yeah, don't want to waste your time following up with clients who aren't interested. So if you send them three emails to schedule and they've never even clicked a schedule link for you, that tells you they're not, they're not running into some tech problem with your scheduling system that they tried, but couldn't Right? like, there's all kinds of things you can infer from whether or not someone clicks a link. So I think, I think you're doing the right thing. Yeah, what, one quick comment on it is that um, I have some concerns about URL shorteners, is, especially in email, is that uh, I think a lot of people are being taught, especially by like our banks and, and other service providers, uh, always double check links before you click on them, you know, phishing scams and that kind of thing. So I, I don't know if there's a way that you can create that link um, so people feel confident that, hey, it's going to me or whatever. Just, you know, um, I think that might be a, a little bit of a concern using some of these unknown URL shorteners. People may look at it and go, I don't know if I can click on this link. I'm not sure. It, fair. It's yeah. if you embed the link, though, like, yes, it, like attach correct. it to text. Most correct. people won't necessarily look at what is this. It, you know, if you say. Yeah, uh, visit my scheduling software, and then yeah, that's, that's a, yeah, it's not link. a bank. Right? Yeah, then I, I think you'll probably be okay. But that's a fair point. Yeah, that's a yeah. uh, that's a it's a fair point. Just to to know that some people might choose to avoid that. 
All right, look, as small business owners, we all know that these unexpected costs can arise at any time. The good news is our sponsor, Zinch, understands that the unexpected is an expected part of running a business. So why wait around for a sudden impact to your business? Check out Zinch today to see how you can become prepared and stay prepared. And that's because Zinch is a direct lender tailored to small and medium-sized businesses like ours that makes loans simple, fast, and flexible and can approve up to 250 k in under two days. When you partner with Zinch, you won't have to wait months for a traditional bank loan. So whether you're dealing with, you know, some burst pipe or lightning struck and like ruins some machinery or another big bill you didn't expect or the costs that come from expanding your workforce, Zinch can help you with what you need when you need it. Their specialists work with you and help you choose the best solutions for your needs. And there are no commissions or third-party approvals, so Zinch can give you better rates, faster approvals, and keep your information secure. Don't wait for an emergency. Apply today with Zinch. And for a limited time, Zinch is waiving application fees for all our listeners of Business Brain here. That's a $250 value just for minutes of your time. Go straight to this special URL, financingthatworks.com. Again, the URL is financingthatworks.com. Loans made or arranged pursuant to a California finance lender's law license and our thanks to Zinch for sponsoring this episode. And while we have you here, I've got a great recommendation for a show. When it comes to Apple, these folks know what they're talking about. Leo Laporte of the Twit Network bought his first Mac over 40 years ago in 1994 and has been an Apple lover ever since. That's probably why they have three, not one, not two, but three Apple podcasts on the Twit Podcast Network. The oldest, of course, is Mac Break Weekly, started almost 20 years ago. Alex Lindsay, Andy Anatko, Jason Snell, and Leo talk about all the latest Apple news. They are Apple fans, but not Apple fan boys. They call it as they see it, and sometimes they're even a little hard on Apple. They also do a show called iOS Today with Micah Sargent and Rosemary Orchard. And if you're into iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches, or Apple TV, you'll love iOS Today. And then, of course, there's Hands on Mac, inside tips from Micah Sargent on getting the most out of your Mac every week. Expert analysis, helpful advice, and entertaining discussions. Go to twit.tv slash Apple to find your next favorite Apple podcast. And our thanks to Leo and the team for doing this swap with us. All right. Uh, Shannon, you found this tweet from Blake Burge that... Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, go ahead and summarize it for us. It, it, I, yeah, I love the a, idea of this. Yeah. Yeah, me too. This is a, uh, a concept. It's a, it sounds kind of weird. But we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. But this is all about creating an avoid at all costs list. A list, and so uh, apparently he's, he's kind of wrapping it in a conversation between uh, uh, Warren Buffett and a and his pilot. You know that kind of thing, whether this happened or not. But it's it's a good good anecdote. And where Buffett recommended, hey, list your top twenty five things that you want to do over the next few years, or maybe even in your in your lifetime. And out of that 25, you pick pick your top five. And Buffett, you know, said, Hey, now now you got to make a plan. How how are you going to start working on this stuff? What do you need? Who do you enlist for help? All this kind of stuff. Um, and of course, uh, you know, Blake posts, hey, this should be now. There should be no delays. You shouldn't put, you know, anything in front of it. Right. But the the interesting part is that after you you picked your top five. Buffett asks him, hey, so what are you going to do with the other, uh, you know, other things on the list, the other 20? And the guy kind of, you know, waffled back and forth, uh, forth according to the story and said, well, I guess I'll kind of dip in and out of those, work on them inter intermittently as I have time. And this is where uh, Buffett says, hey, you've got it all wrong. Everything that's not in those time, top five should be your avoid at all costs list. No matter Ooh. what, those things get no attention until you've succeeded with your top five. And I, I thought this was really interesting. I'm, of course, all about focus and, um, you know, getting away from the myth of multitasking that we've discussed here on the show before and really figuring out a plan and systems 
to nail that top five. And I'd, I'd love to dig in a little bit more, get your opinion on that. I, I love this idea because it's really easy to follow what like that conventional wisdom would lead us to follow the pilot's thought of, well, I, I mean, those 20, those other 20 things are obviously still important. So I need to do those whenever right. I can. Right. And, yeah, yeah. and, and maybe zooming out, one could say that Buffett's advice is that right. It's do those whenever you can, but his definition of whenever you can is only after the top five are completed and checked off your list and done, right? There's no in-between time to work on anything other than the top five. Yeah, and I think that's crucial. You know, we talk a lot about focus, and then I always, you know, I love this concept of revenue stacks, you know, developing yeah. different streams of income. But you do have to be careful of the squirrel, and, the, and then falling in love with ideas can be really problematic. And I have this problem too, where you you're you start working, you're moving down the road on one project, and all of a sudden something on the side start going, "Hey, this is an amazing idea that you yeah. have over here. Maybe yeah. you should put a little bit of your oh, you've got extra time. Maybe you should focus on this." And in my case, it's like start a new business, launch a new product, you know, uh, whatever. That can be really uh, destructive for keeping focused on these the, these whether it's your top five or whatever project that, that you're involved in. And uh, I think it's great. And I, I love this being obsessive about these five things. You know, we, we always talk about like the niche, you know, the riches are in the niches. Yeah. Th this is it, you know, focus on these things, but don't cut yourself off. It's not like he's saying, well, once you get these five things done, you can't do anything else. Right. You know, this is, this is it. If you knock one off the list, then go ahead and move one up, uh, uh, you know, from your uh, other 20. Uh, I, I think it's great. I, I really I, I like think this idea. I, the, yeah, the idea, the thing that, that jumped out to me, well, two things was the idea of focus, right? Like that whole concept is key. But at, what what I really liked about this was being ruthless with your priorities. Uh, yeah. It, you know, that's because yes. I've always, I, I love the word ruthless. I, I not when dealing with other people, I've, I've actually done quite well in my career by not being ruthless with other humans, but being ruthless with my own time and my own focus, it really is something that I am happy to, to do. And I like the word ruthless for that because it, it reminds me that there is no wiggle room there, right? It's, uh, it, you have to, keep pushing yeah. on those things. And I think that's really important. Yeah, it, it is. It, it, and keeping you, you know, going on these, okay, I've got these five things. These are my projects, whatever it's done. Uh, you know, one of the commenters in the, uh, actually it was David Morris commented on this hmm. that uh, we just had on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's like, you know, I recently heard someone comment that what makes pro athletes great is what they're willing not to do. Or what they're oh. willing to not do, whatever you look at it. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it's like the Steve Job things, you know, the power of saying no. The power of saying and, no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah they said yeah. he 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 proudly proclaimed, and many of the folks that worked with him said the same thing that they said no to more things than they said yes to. In fact, it was it it, you know, saying yes to something was very rare and very carefully considered because they knew that they have limited time and limited resources to work on this stuff. And that, you know, that was certainly true and, yeah, when Apple totally. was, yeah. was it's, but it's true of all of us, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, and even now, I mean, Apple's, you know, the, the, at, at any given point in time, the largest company in the world. Right. Right. And yet I think they still live by this idea of saying no to far more things than they say yes to. I, I would argue they've said yes to more things than Steve would have were he still around. I, I can't say that for certain, but uh, having watched Apple pre and, you know, before Steve left and after Steve left, it's like, yeah, there, there's a little bit of fo focus. There is a different type of focus at Apple now. There is. Yes, uh, for sure. But, um, but they're still a very focused company. I mean, I, I'm nitpicking here, but in general, yeah, yeah very focused company. Yeah. The one thing I would add about this, this list and avoid at all costs list is, is that these five things, you know, you, you really should look at it because maybe, you know, 
you should put some smaller things on that five that so you could have that uh, habit of success starting. So you could like, okay, hey, f- out of these five, you know, three of them are are pretty significant. Sure. Maybe maybe a couple of them uh, uh, I'm going to be able to knock out in the next whatever, 90 days, you know, six months, whatever your timeline is. Yeah. But uh, I think it's important, you know, it comes down to this goals versus system thing. If if you have these big lofty things out there, it's easy to feel like you're failing uh, because you can't hit them fast enough or whatever. But if you get some things in there that are, get you comfortable and, um, oh yeah, look, I knocked one thing off the list. I can add another one. I did something else. It just, I think that that helps you. It's like that, I'm not a big fan of this term, but this baby step kind of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, I think, you know, Dave Ramsey flips it on its head with debt. He says, you know, the debt snowball program, you should start by paying off your smallest uh, people that you owe money to first, creditors, you know, that kind of thing. So, because it just kind of helps you get in the mode and of. Yeah, you have little wins. Get them off. Yeah. yeah. Small wins. Small, Small wins, wins are really powerful. So, yeah. uh, out of that five, you know, don't put every life. Uh, goal you have in there. Give yourself <laughs> an opportunity to to get some successes under your belt because that's going to help you move up the, the list and and make uh, make progress on the other twenty. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, let us know uh, what this, you man. think of this this list thing out there. You know, uh, feedback at businessbrain dot show. Talk to us. Get entered to win a MacBook like Robert did and. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your week. Absolutely. Yeah, folks. Thanks again. That's feedback at businessbrain.show. Send in your thoughts, your comments, your questions. We love it. And uh, keep living that charmed life together, huh? See you next time. 